So let's talk about parking. My recommendation is everywhere you can, and you can't do it everywhere, is go with more parking on street, everywhere. And uh, make it fun, make it attractive, make it green, make it colorful. Uh, these are all just examples, and again, I'm trying to pick scenes that are also snow country, Boise. Um, have good, strong edges, make the parking attractive so that it doesn't feel like it's part of the street. My preference is back in angled because it takes up less space, it's easier to park, it's much easier to unpark, and many benefits with back in. Uh, we'll go through a few of them. If you don't have room for back end angled parking, go with inset. Uh, you've already done it uh, on 30, 30th Avenue, uh, so you have a pretty good feel for it. You can use different materials, you make it even stronger, more compelling. You can do it as head in uh, when you have the width. And just to show you that you can do this in a fairly narrow space, and I have to, in my own head, use feet. This is 54 feet. 15 feet for the parking, two for the valley gutter, 20 for the deck, no center line. And uh, so along comes a delivery, parks temporarily, there are no hiccups. The point is we can no longer afford to have a dedicated space for everything we need in the future, that we're gonna to learn to share more, we're gonna use space better, and we're gonna have more attractive, more functional, and more successful places because we think through all of these steps. Now, back in parking uh, will not be universal, but it should be uh, a way to go from parallel to, to added parking everywhere you can. It is the safest way to park. It's not new. <laughs> Bicyclists can do it. Cowboys can do it. Classic car owners do it all the time. It's better for anyone with a handicap uh, or anyone who wants to get in and out of a trunk. Rednecks can do it. Is that a term you use here in Canada? Rednecks? Okay, good. Um, urbanites, even Congress. They can't agree on anything, but they can back in Angle Park. Uh, and, and, and again, there's so many values. You open the car door, you're sending your children back to a point of safety. You can totally load up streets uh, get a lot more use out of the street, more function out of the street. These are all in uh, Seattle. They have over 400. You can stagger it one side of the street, go to the other uh, side, and that creates a natural chicane to slow the traffic. Now, the intermodal center, we looked at the transformation, but I want to now uh, show you uh, the, the opportunity and the value. This is a smaller one, but I want to point out how important design is. This one is in Missoula. They, they put a pretty attractive little thing on the corner, but they really should have put the entrance on the corner, don't you think? Uh, so getting these details is going to be important. In time, park aids that uh, allow you to have a beautiful building, but yet it's storing automobiles that people want to go into that's very attractive, very well designed, very secure, and very well located uh, these are all just examples of some that are uh, uh, very, high, very high use. Every one of these is a parkade. This one in Ann Arbor. It's important that all of our buildings of the future honor uh, who we are, where we are, uh, that hold the corner, that make it uh, where we're being watched over all of these things. So let's get into some details. Uh, Mike, do we have more time on the tape or are we? Oh my gosh, that quick, okay. Uh, those who were not on the walk, how many of you see the problem for the pedestrian here? Those of you on the walk can see it, right? Notice that the car is gonna back over the sidewalk, right? And so when we review site plans in the future, we need to see them with new eyes. Now this is an example of a parking structure, a parkade, where I think they did it right, they kept it flat, they used a different color, and everyone gets very good and sufficient notice that this is a change in the walking condition and the driving condition. Uh, we, in fact, here we use the tactile strip. Roundabouts, uh, probably little needs to be said about the roundabouts, except I've heard that not everybody is for them yet. 
Is that right? Not everybody? Let me point out a few obvious benefits. First of all, 90% of fatalities disappear. Over 60% of injuries disappear. 30% more traffic is moved. The land values go up. They're simpler, easier for pedestrians. This is my first roundabout. It's in Bradenton Beach. We were killing one pedestrian a year here, one a year. And uh, we installed the roundabout. It's been on the ground 15 years, and so far there is no recorded crash whatsoever. It added so much value to the land that we now have brand new buildings. Uh, this is the granddaddy of them all. This uh, is a five lane uh, carrying 23,000 cars. 32nd, I believe, carries more than that. But this five lane was right on the borderline. We felt that we could take out three of the lanes. We did. This is the same exact location. Think of the added value to that land. Uh, same road, again, see the compression. Same road before and after. And uh, businesses uh, improved immediately, went up about 30%. Brand new stores came in, including this one. Uh, pedestrians and bicycles got across a one lane at a time, much better than five lanes at a time where they were waiting as long as three minutes for the signal. And uh, uh, vast numbers of new bicyclists, people coming, congregating, spending time, spending money, improving the life, brand new drugstore. We're at the end, and I want to just point out a couple of things where we turn on the lights, that as recently as April 19, or I'm sorry, 2008, uh, Newsweek reported that car buyers rated fuel efficiency 17th, 17th. Cup holders were more important to them than fuel efficiency. <laughs> now that changed, but I want to point out just how fickle uh, the consumer is to not rate fuel efficiency any higher than 17th when they were buying a car. I think it's important, too, to point out that if we are to have all of these things that you're laying out in your city center plan with all the works being done by committees, uh, many supporting organizations, and all of your agencies, then it's got to start with everyone in this room starting to do something. And to show you how simple that can be, I want to close with this story. Rex Burkholder, uh, who now is a regional commissioner for Portland area. Uh, when I took a walk with him about 12 years ago, when he was an average citizen, uh, we walked around and photographed, and I shot nine rolls of film back when they had that stuff. And uh, came back to his house, then saw this, and this, when I photographed it, I realized what we in National Geographic call the bell ringer. It tells the story. Seeing Rex bench and him seeing how impressed I was with it, he said, well, Dan, I need to tell you the story. That two weeks ago, I got a letter in the mail. And when I opened the letter and started to read it and saw the tear stains, I began to cry. This is what the letter said. I want to thank you for your wonderful act of love and kindness and generosity for our neighborhood. I just lost my greatest friend a friendship I had for over 40 years. He lived out his last year of life with dignity because he could still shop for himself. He needed a place to rest on the way to the store. He needed a place to rest on the way home from the store. I went home two weeks later, bought my own bench, which sits in front of my own house. And everyone can start with something. And I think that's the whole point, is that we cannot have an active, alive, vibrant town center until we all start to work together, agree together, overcome those who didn't come tonight, share the stories, and share the wealth of knowledge and experience that you will all gain over time. Uh, you're well on the road to healing and recovery. I'm uh, convinced you're going to make it, <clears throat> and you're going to make it in a very big way. Uh, this whole presentation, by the way, was videotaped, and uh, 
You can uh, uh, get a copy of it by contacting Chris. This is his phone number, his email, and uh, I believe uh, sometime fairly soon they'll be able to make it available on a DVD or, or however the media will be. So with that, let's go ahead and get the lights, Chris. Thank you, Thank you. folks.